uh, and they call me Bull, B-U-L-L. -L. And uh, you're running for which seat? I'm running for Congress in Minnesota's 7th District, which is basically all of western Minnesota, 42,000 square miles. Okay. Why are we here on the steps of the Capitol? Uh, we're out here today because we're going to do a rally that actually has nothing to do with my campaign. This is a rally for what's called Defend the Guard. What Defend the Guard is, is meant to do is, is to pressure legislators into passing a law that would prohibit state National Guard troops from deploying to a combat zone unless Congress actually did its job and declared war. Uh, our hope for this is, again, one, to take that power back from the executive branch, put it back in the, in the congressional branch, which is the people's branch, put it back in the hands of the people so that we have influence on this. Uh, secondly, these troops are, are state troops. I mean, uh, we should have some type of say on whether they deploy to a foreign combat zone or not. And part of that say is supposed to be on whether Congress declares war. So yeah, that's the, the big purpose for doing this. And uh, it, it's one of those subjects that I really like because despite whatever your political views are, you can get behind this. So I mean, we have, we're out here at this event. We've got, I think, four or five political parties that's going to be represented today. They're all out here supporting this program, and not a one of them is compromising their principles to do it. I think with all the fights, the decisiveness we have going on going with the country right now, it's good to find something we can unite on. I think it's, it's necessary at this point, because right now it's kind of can we agree on anything. And so uh, you have a bunch of people coming out to this thing yep. to speak, not all uh, Republican types. Right. Talk about that a little bit. We've oh. got we've got a wide variety of speakers. We've got. Uh, We've got a young lady who's the chair of the new Progressive Party, which is just now getting formed up. We've got my Democrat opponent, Jill Aversine, who uh, I was very happy to see her come out here. And, uh, because it's good when, when my opponent even believes in this enough that we can come out here and work on this together. I mean, it shows that things don't have to be ugly between the opponents. We've got a wide variety of uh, LMN candidates, legalized marijuana now candidates. We've got libertarian candidates here. and. Uh, and, and uh, did I miss anybody? <laughs> yeah, so we got DFL, we got Libertarian. GOP. We've got, oh, GOP. <laughs> well, GOP we already mentioned. Yeah, so we've got a, a great big variety. So it shows this is not a, a one-party issue. Uh, we've also got uh, former Governor Jesse Ventura, who's going to be here for this, who, represent, who used to represent the Reform Party. Uh, we've got a gentleman named Scott Horton here, who's, who's a great author, great... Uh, he brings a, a real good perspective from the anti-war side uh, of the, uh, the argument. Or, so, I mean, we're, we're, we're glad to have some, him here. I mean, he's a, he's a national radio host. So we're, we've got a lot of support back here for this thing. And uh, just to be able to do this, and we, we only started doing this about two weeks ago. So this came together quickly. Uh, we had a lot more people who, who would like to have been here, which we, we just couldn't coordinate in time. It's the middle of campaign season, okay? We're seven weeks from the election, one week or two weeks from early uh, voting. So a lot of these guys could not be here. They wanted to be here, but they're out knocking on doors today. But we do have some statements from some of them as well to, to support this. And we're hoping that uh, the bill was already submitted last year with by... Uh, by uh, Eric Mortensen. Eric Mortensen, I'm having a brain fart there. <laughs> by Eric Mortensen. And uh, it's sitting in there right now. So we'd like to be able to get enough support behind it that we can get it pushed and get it, get it moved forward. So why should Minnesotans care about this? I think a lot of people would just think, um, you know, I'm not in the Guard. Mm -hmm. I don't even know anybody in the Guard. Why does this affect me? That, there's a couple reasons, okay? I mean, uh, one, the Guard is supposed to help, is here to help with our national disasters. Uh, that's a big issue. The bigger issue is where do you want the, the country to be on a war footing, war-wise, where it wants to be. If you take away the government's ability to task and take the National Guard out of the war planning phase, it severely limits their ability to do sustained combat operations overseas. Uh, there's so much of, that, of their jobs that are specialized in the Guard that they would lose access to. And, it, uh, and it's also about giving you, giving you the people the control. I mean, if it's just done by the president, what say do you have? But if Congress actually has to declare war, guess what? You can contact your representative. You can have a say. That's what this whole thing is, a lot of this is about, is putting the, the, the say back in the people's hand, putting the, putting the representatives in the position where they have to represent. Anyone else got questions?
Anything else you want Bull, to say? how Bull, over the last 20 years mm -hmm. of the, the global war on terror, right. how many of those 20 years have a Minnesota National Guard troops been deployed? I would have to look up specifically, but from what I was glancing at earlier, probably two, two thirds. So uh, that's almost a full generation. Yeah, I mean, if you look for, a, you know, about a 12 or 13 year period where there was only one year where the Red Bull was not deployed. That's a lot of National Guard. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a lot. I mean, I, uh, I was actually Texas National Guard in that, I deployed in 2004 through 2006 with some of the, the Red Bull. And uh, you know what, I mean, there, it's just that, that patch has almost become a staple overseas in the Middle East now. Somebody, um, somebody was saying that Minnesota's deployed as many if not more National Guard troops than any other state. Is, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I really wouldn't. Uh, I, again, I don't have yeah. the exact numbers. I wish I did. Uh, but I, I do think it's to the point that that the National Guard is being abused. Mm -hmm. They're, I mean, it's 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 hard on these National Guard troops to keep on getting deployed. Uh, I mean, one of my big platforms, one of my huge platforms on on my for my election is is reducing and preventing veteran suicides. Right. You know what the best thing we can do for a combat vet? Stop making them. How many a day are dying? To At suicide? least 22 a day from, was the last thing I heard. And from what else I heard, of that 22, that does not include active duty. Right. That doesn't, yeah, that's veterans. That's, yeah, that's 22 veterans, a day. Yep. Exactly. And uh, it, it frustrates me because every campaign page you ever look at for any congressional campaign talks about how much they want to help the vets and how, how important the vets are to them. But not a, one of them do a damn thing about it. What, what are... The active duty military, and not not to downplay the importance of what they do and, and the risks that they're at, but the active duty military actually, that's their job, is to deploy. Yeah. What are the detriments and the downfalls for National Guard troops? Because they're, they're not just getting paid to go do this. They're also losing out on a lot. What are some of the domestic things they're losing out on? Well, it, it depends. A lot of them, uh, their careers go on pause, okay? Uh, sometimes a lot of these are college students, okay, so they get they get started in their adult life after college two to three years later uh, I mean, then there's there's just the if depending on what you're doing and depending on what you're seeing I mean these scars that can be people could carry the rest of their lives. I mean Combat's not a joke. I mean, okay. I I have very I don't have much. I'm a 20-year army vet uh, I was in the combat zone for a year and a half. but I was only in an active area for combat probably a couple of months and uh, even in those those couple of months I'll tell you I mean it's it, it, it leaves a mark on people and, some of uh, these guys are losing their houses and their businesses it, it, and their possible, farms it, it, it is very possible and the, the the real people who would hurt is, is small business owners who runs their business if they're deployed okay uh, another big issue with, with and this may not be Minnesota as well but a lot of the the, the units that are counted on our hospital units, National Guard. When these guys deploy, they're taking doctors and nurses and everything out of their community. Okay, so this this is a, a wide ranging issue that that hits on a bunch of different different aspects. Well, Matt Kowalski, Koala Media. Can you tell us uh, or people at home why it's so important to build coalitions and find agreements with? Uh, other parties because it seems like a lot of times in politics it's very contentious why why is that important to you to reach across the aisle and be above the fray well for one it's the only way we're gonna i think it's the main way we're gonna get things done uh and it's the only way to counter what's going on between the two-party system right now of you can't let the other side win and because if the other side wins we lose if, if you get them both working on the same thing guess what nobody wins nobody loses nobody gains nobody Nobody loses anything, and we can go on with life. But right now, it's you look at some of the, the things people vote on, and there there's no reason people vote the way they do, except the fact that it's coming from the other party. Uh, prime example is you look at the uh, some of the GOP record uh, on veterans programs this year. Veterans programs, everybody wants to take care of the veterans, but most of the uh, the programs that were pushed forward to help veterans this year. The GOP voted against, and if you ask why, because I asked why, and the comment I, I received was, well, it's a Democratic trick. <laughs> what do you mean it's a Democratic trick? Okay, one of these programs was doing nothing more than making it easier 
for, for uh, soldiers to access the VA and know that they were entitled to the VA. Okay, <laughs> where's the trick there? I mean, it, was a, it wasn't a, a big, there was no got me's, there was no, I mean, these are all single issue bills, but people who are, who are normally very pro-veteran voted against them for no other reason than it was the other party. We gotta get together and work together and, and build these coalitions. Build stuff like this to show that we can show the American people we can work together. Because right now, I mean, they don't think we can't. They're, they're giving up hope right now on us because they figure, you know, those, these two jokers will never work and never get anything done. And you know what? And maybe small issues like this that we build one issue at a time, that we do this trust building. Hey, you know what? We're doing this this week. Next six months from now, there might be another issue we can all agree on. Let's do that and let's start moving together because. Guys, I mean, they're tearing the country apart. And be all, all, all they care about right now is who's sitting over the ashes. And, and that's wrong. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons I decided to run. I mean, if I had to ask myself, if not me, who if not now, when? I retired from the Army in 2018 and said, you know what, I'm done serving. Well, 2020, I saw what they were doing to my country said, maybe not. Maybe there's a little bit left in the tank. That's what made me decide to, decide to, to get involved is because I don't want to see the country torn apart from within. Turned into a press conference. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's great.